everyone and welcome back to the Camden's Day. Hi everyone, I'm Jay and thanks for joining me today. I am starting to do a new series of videos called So What's New? Because we all need another sewing pun in our lives, don't we? The kind of gist of these videos is just to talk about what I've been up to in the last week and also to have a little snoop through any sort of sewing goodies that might have come. So let's start. The first thing that came in the post uh, last week were some goodies from Wish. I don't know if you use Wish, it's kind of much maligned and mocked because some of the stuff you get there doesn't quite look like the pictures. but. Basically, it's an American site that's taken advantage of the fact that you can ship goods from China very cheap. You're buying direct from the manufacturers in China and that means that the goods are often very, very cheap. When I was telling Ian about which I, I've got loads and loads of my sewing stuff from there. I think that it's brilliant. I think that you can get lots of basics from there. Um, thread snips, spool holders. Uh, seam rippers, I got a pack of 12 seam, seam rippers for £2 including delivery um, and when I mentioned it to Ian he said well doesn't that mean that all the goods will come from China and I said well where do you think the goods in the shops come from? If you look at everything is manufactured, man, nothing's manufactured in the UK anymore, everything's manufactured in the Far East or Indonesia um, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be poor quality and just because it's cheap it doesn't mean it's going to be poor quality what it means is you're not paying the costs for it to be shipped to a shop and them to have to rent um, retail space to sell it and store it you're cutting out all those costs so you can get things really really cheap so now that my advert for Wish is finished um, I got some new thread snips so I got this pack of three one of them's red uh, you can't choose what colours you're going to get. Um, I think these were £1 and then £2 shipping. No, £1 and then £1 shipping. So there were £2 in all. You do have to watch the shipping price because it's a massive sort of uh, race to get to the lowest price. Um, a lot of, of the goods there are marketed as free, just pay postage and packing. But then sometimes you might find that the postage and packing charges are actually higher than the ones that aren't advertising as free. So for instance, um, you could see a packet of three thread snips advertised as free, but then the postage and packing might be three pounds, whereas these were one pound with one pound postage and packing. So obviously you've got three thread snips, two quid. And they're brilliant. I think I've got about seven or eight now because thread snips, like anything, they go blunt. So, and if you're anything like me, they go missing. So it's always good to have uh, a few pairs hanging around. I have them on hooks on my button, uh, on my pegboard and my sewing space. The other thing that I got that was really lovely, I've actually, it's a bit stupid opening it on camera because it's really crackly. I bought this lovely edging, daisy edging, and this was one pound. I think it might have been free just pay postage and packing which was a pound it was very cheap and it was three meters of daisy trim and I got one white and I got another one that's exactly the same but black I won't bother getting it out to show you but I'm very happy with that I think it will look lovely on um, I would really like to make another Martha style dress maybe not exactly the Martha pattern because there's a lot of pieces to that and it's quite fabric hungry because a lot of the, the all the skirt pieces are cut on the bias but that style with a um, a low collar turtleneck and uh, bell sleeves and a sort of swirly skirt is something that I would really like to try again oh just before we go on any further just to let you know that what I'm wearing today is the first no it's the second day of me made May that I'm filming this on like everybody, I'm using it as an opportunity to look through my clothing and decide what works and what doesn't work. This top, I put it on and thought, oh, I really like it. Why don't I wear it more? It's the sort of thing that I would probably used to wear if I was at work with some smart black trousers because it's a blouse and it's made of this stretch cotton sateen. And I really love the pattern, but because of the pattern, it's quite. Di it was quite difficult to find um, a sewing pattern to use it on because 
you I didn't have enough for trousers a skirt would have chopped it up and it wouldn't have looked right so I finished up using this vintage pattern it's like a 1990s pattern it's very boxy but I think actually unfortunately it's too big for me you can see around the around the neck it's kind of hanging off me it looks a bit like an American footballer which is a bit of a shame but I don't think I'll probably hang on to it because I think it's a bit silly hanging on to stuff that probably won't get worn again I got something nice through the post. If you look at my Triumphs and Disasters video, you will see that I came second in a competition that I made a vintage dress for. It's called Sew Your Style. And the prize was I got 50 pounds of vouchers from Net Printer and I got to choose either three meters of fabric. Um, and it was from Handtex. They stock a lot of the um, quilting fabric suppliers. So things like Cloud9 Fabrics, um, Michael Miller, stuff like that. So I could either get three meters of fabric or um, a fat quarter set and I actually chose to get, to get the fat quarter set because I thought these were so lovely and there's all these different colours you could choose different shades and I chose the yellow one and I think that will make a really really lovely quilt normally when I'm making quilts I've only just started doing English paper piecing and I just use scraps of quilting cotton that I have but so they're not normally sort of colour matched or anything but I think that if I'm going to make a yellow quill, I think this will look very sunny and bright together. So I'm very pleased with that. What else came? Um, Fibre Mood has arrived. I do talk about uh, this magazine quite a lot in my Instagram stories. It's a new European, I think it's Belgian. It's a new European sewing magazine and it's one that has patterns in. It's a pattern book basically. And I was very impressed with the first and second editions. I liked loads of the patterns, a lot more than the Bird of Style, the ones that you get in Bird of Style magazines. Also, the patterns that you get in uh, Fibre Mood, although you do have to trace them, they're nothing like as uh, complicated and liney as the Bird of Style ones. You're only over tracing one or two sets of lines rather than the bird of style ones that basically look like a scribble has died on the page um so in this issue of fiber mood i won't go through all of them but that's the page that shows the patterns that will be in this edition so you've got a suit jacket uh, matching trousers i really like this suit jacket actually uh, the hashtag, if you want to look at it, the name of it, it's called hashtag Kai. So you can go to Instagram and just type that in and you'll see all the versions that other people have made. Um, the next one is, right, the one called Josie. That's a top. I'm not too bothered about that. The next one is a skirt called Dixie, which I don't like the long version, but... I think that it might be quite nice. They make it up in different ones and show you the photography is quite nice. I would like that in a short version. I think it would look quite tulipy if you hacked it off about there because it's got these quite nice pleats. But I don't think this this fabric choice was brilliant actually that they've photographed this in because it, it looks quite creasy and it hides the pleating detail I think. But I like that one. I think it's a bit unusual. There's a couple of kids patterns and then the next one is, the next adult one is a shirt, a wrap, sorry not a shirt dress, a wrap dress called Vienna and I like it, it's quite an interesting style isn't it, the way that it wraps around the legs. I don't really think I would wear that, no, I don't think that's my style but I think that it's one of those things that might actually look really cool on. I really like the way that this sort of falls into the legs. So that one is called Vienna. Oh yeah, that's the line drawing as well, which I always like. They show the front and back line drawing. They tell you whether or not the pattern's suitable for knits. One of the things I like about Fibre Mood is they make a lot of their patterns suitable for knits, whereas I find Birder Style, you might find one and it'll be like a jumper. But these have a lot of patterns that you can do in either knits or wovens which i think is really good um the other thing that fiber mood is nice for is they have nice knitting patterns now my knitting came to a bit of a stall uh, so they have that one's called odor stripes because it is like where's the odor 
Right, that's Oda, that's the main one, which I think is a really, really nice shape. And then that is the version with... Sorry, I'm not doing this very well. That's the version with stripes running through it. Um, I My knitting stalled a bit, but I have to say, if I was knitting again, these are exactly the type of things that I would want to be knitting. I think the, pattern, the knitting patterns that they have are really modern. I really like the style of this jumper and how... It's got like this cocoon effect around the sleeves. So you've got two versions. You've got one that's plain and one that's with stripes. Um, I do normally just skim past the kids ones, obviously, because I don't have any kids to sew for and I don't really know many people with children, even though I find that everybody I've met in the sewing community over the last year has had a baby. Um, so maybe I will have some kids to sew for one day, but at the moment I don't. So normally I just skim through, but I have to just say, I was really impressed with the photography Look at that kid, that little girl is so cool with those boots on. And I think it's so nice to see a girl who isn't totally feminised and put in clothes that you wouldn't be able to play in. I think it's so nice to see a girl looking really cool but wearing like really practical clothes. And that makes the patterns appeal to me all the more really. Um, and there's another picture of her in another version of that shirt dress. I think it's really lovely. So Fiber Mood isn't a cheap magazine, it's a tenner, but I subscribe, which means I get it for like £9. It's not a massive saving, but I do like it. I think that it's the sort of pattern that there's always at least one pattern that I want to make in it, which, you know, Birda, I get them and I very rarely make any of them. Um, there is a men's shirt pattern, which is quite nice. I think you, there's it in short sleeves. Oh, sorry, and there's some men's chinos as well. Oh, no, they're not chinos. They're like loose joggers. Yeah. All patterns that I would make. The next dress is called Taylor, which I think is quite sweet, but it's a bit similar to me to the previous one, I think. That's the line drawing of it. I think the photographs that they have are lovely and just I'm going to tag in so over 50 they have older models as well which is really nice and they will often show the um, the pattern with people of different body shapes which I think is really nice as well so here's another pattern for a wrap top it is called Wally's spelt like you Wally which I think is probably a British expression meaning you idiot I think that's really pretty. I wouldn't make that. I'm a bit fed up of the wrap phase. I think that's because it doesn't suit me. I've tried it so many times and it just doesn't look good on me. A pattern for three macrame bags, which I think are absolutely lovely. But personally, I can't see the practicality of a bag with holes in it. <laughs> Surely everything would just fall straight out. Now, this is my absolute favourite dress in this, which I would definitely, definitely make. It is called Mira, and it is a beautiful, loose, tiered dress. And there it is. And it looks so easy to sew up and so summery and pretty. That one's made in a cheesecloth. And then over the page, it's photographed in different... So they've made it in a black there. And there's a couple more shots of it there. And there's the line drawing. I think that's really, really nice. I think that's the sort of pattern you'd get a lot of wear out over the summer. So that's a quick glance through Fibre Mood. Let me know what you think of it. Um, the other thing that I've been up to is we went to Manchester to see... I, I'm probably talking to an absolute minority of people here. We went to Manchester to see an exhibition dedicated to a comic called Frank Sidebottom and I shall pop a picture in here and he was big in the 90s and if you're a 90s kid like me in the UK it was Friday night after the pub television, very silly. Anyway, um, unfortunately he died, very sadly he died recently and there's been a film made about his life called Being Frank and a few books written about him. Anyway, Manchester decided to have a exhibition dedicated to him in the central library and ian and i went up to have a look at it i wasn't feeling great i didn't know if i'd be able to go until right at the last minute unfortunately i 
my health means I miss out on things quite a lot often I will book tickets and then I can't go at the last minute and unfortunately it's just a waste of money you just lose the ticket but I was so pleased that I managed to get up to Manchester because the exhibition was really great it was really silly it was great fun um, it's finished now we went to the last day but if you can get hold of any of Frank Sidebottom's um, DVDs then they're worth having a look at they're very silly if you've got that sort of sense of humour like me but aside from that I went to Abercan obviously I'm in Manchester I'm going to go to Abercan so I've got a mini fabric sash to show you in the bins near the till they'd got little bags just like that tied up no prices on or anything and I found this lovely pearl sort of cream it's not pearl actually it's like cream oh it is pearl sorry cream faceted and pearl neck piece trim and that was a pound and I just really liked it I thought it'd look really cute stitched on the front of a dress obviously I got some fabric as well I'm not mad well technically I am mad forget that last comment for once Abacan didn't fail me but I think I failed Abacan I'm a little bit in two minds about the things that I bought and I think really I was just in a bit of a silly panic buying mode buy it for the sake of it so I'm not 100% about some of the things that I bought, but I'll just give you a quick run through. I'm very pleased with this. This is a viscose and it's just a very nice sort of random painty splodgy pattern and it's lovely and drapey. It'll be really cool and this is destined to be either a long dress with a sort of I don't have a pattern for this, I'm going to have to cobble it together from other patterns that I've got, but with like an Ogden Cami style top and then just a loose flowing skirt with maybe some splits in it. Either that or a loose jumpsuit, I haven't decided yet. If you've got a view, then please do let me know. I mean, obviously I'm erring towards a jumpsuit, but I've got a lot of jumpsuits. I got some t-shirt jersey for Ian, he chose that, he loves florals, and he doesn't have a lot of money to spend on clothes, so I do like to try and make him something whenever I can. I bought this when I said I'm in two minds about some of the fabric I bought this one thinking it was gorgeous I love the colors pink uh, sort of royal blue it's coming up a bit dark but it's more of a royal blue um, and red and I loved it and then when I took it away I thought does it look really Christmassy does it look like that Scandi style Christmas thing I don't know I mean when I bought it I thought it looked kind of 70s folksy I was going to make like a dirndl style dress out of it and then I got it away and I thought actually I'm not sure but it was 2 99 a metre so it was really cheap and I just got I uh, got two and a half metres of that so I got enough to make a really nice full skirt of dress. This is a gorgeous cheesecloth type fabric. It's got all sorts of different coloured paint splodges in it but predominantly sort of royal blue white grey on a navy background and unfortunately it's not cotton it's polyester and it feels a bit polyestery but I like the texture of the fabric I thought it would be really cool and floaty so I may use it actually to make one of those dresses that I've just shown you the one the ones with all the tears on I think that would be great yes right that is the plan for that one good thumbs up Oh yeah, the other problem that I had, flipping egg, I was a bit annoyed, I got to the counter and I bought what I thought was some very, very pretty lace dress fabric and it's lilac, obviously you can't see the shade when I hold it up like that because it's very sheer, but let me show you it when it's all folded together. So yeah, that's quite true to colour. It, it's probably a little bit more in lilac -y than that in real life so it's a lilac sheer net embroidered dress fabric that I thought would make a lovely sort of fit and flare summer dress very pretty for an occasion something like that and when I brought it she said oh have you got that from the net curtain section and I was like no don't tell me I'm gonna look like I'm wearing a pair of net curtains so you know how somebody can say something and it really kind of puts you off but 
anyway, I got that and I'll make it and I'm sure, I'm sure it will be lovely. Because obviously if you put something behind it, I mean, what I was going to do was get some matching lilac cotton poplin or something and obviously line it with something like that or some crepe actually might be good so that's the plan for that in the summer I absolutely love wearing lacy embroidered type dresses with like a backing and then a lace layer over layer of them I love wearing broderie anglais I've already bought loads of eyelet type broderie anglais different colors and Abacan had a brilliant embroidered lace section and had a a real fertile through it and unfortunately embroidered lace weighs very heavy so although I wanted a lot of it I knew that a we couldn't carry it but b it would work out very expensive so I had to limit myself so I bought this royal blue one which has it's like a border so the main part is this kind of circles pattern and then at the bottom, there's a broad base of this floral lace. Um, so I'm very happy with that. And I got two metres of that. And I intend to use it on a pattern which I've just ordered from So Direct, who are a pattern company where you can get cheap big four patterns from. Um, and it's on its way. And it's a very loose elastic waist dress it's quite similar to the Tilly and the Buttons Bettine dress and that's what I plan to make out of that one but I really wanted some white and I saw this beautiful 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 white and grabbed it and this is the oh, sorry and this is the main body of the lace with this lovely pattern and then at either end it's got this beautiful loopy floral type border to it and I grabbed it and I thought I absolutely love that I can't I can't wait to make a really pretty sort of broderie anglais type dress out of this fabric but one meter isn't enough so I dived back in and all the fabric is in kind of like wire bins and you have to go like burrow in like a fabric seeking mole um, and I burrowed and burrowed and burrowed and I found another metre and I was so happy but there weren't any longer pieces so I thought I'm going to have to buy two metres separately so here it is and same fabric, same design and everything yeah exactly the same I was so happy, paid for it all the embroidered lace was worked out quite quite expensive I think for these two pieces of white it was 17 quid so it was 8.50 a meter which is more than I would normally pay but it was exactly what I wanted so I was really happy got it home unpacked it in the daylight and found out that these two I don't know if you can see in the here they don't match honestly good good this one is white and this one is slightly ivory. I am going to try bleaching a little bit of this, just a corner of it, and see if it will come up any whiter. I don't know if it will because there won't be much natural fibres in it. It's probably all polyester. So I don't know how well polyester bleaches. Um, not as well as cotton, certainly. And obviously I don't want to risk ruining it. But on the other hand... I don't really have enough to do anything with either one on their own. I don't want to make a skirt because I never wear skirts on their own. Um, yeah, one you can see the like the bluey white in it, and the other one's like a yellowy white. Highly annoying, highly annoying. So I let myself down at Abacan, but had a lovely day, and it was great to get out of the house. So that was what was new in my last week in sewing news. I hope you enjoyed hearing about my week and please don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps me. If you do that then it boosts up how much YouTube show my video to other people so it means I get more sub subscribers which is lovely for me because it makes me feel like I'm not just sitting here blathering away to myself. Right, see you soon, bye! In the summer I absolutely like love wearing in the summer <laughs>